Greetings and welcome once again to my new calculus channel. My name is John Gabriel. So today I'm going to talk about a number of issues or topics, and I'm going to be using uh, Euler's Elements of Algebra. And the problem with uh, his work on the on his Elements of Algebra is that he would have really had a very good book if he if he actually understood what he was doing. But Euler was a bit of a scatterbrained person, okay? Not really a great mathematician as everybody thinks he was. And uh, so, so he had these really nutty ideas about what is a fraction and uh, what is a, a division, etc. But it's pretty strange because he does a lot of things in the elements which would make one think that he really did understand. So if we look at his article 289, this is the first big blunder that he made. He said, when the dividend is not divisible by the divisor, the quotient is expressed, as we have already observed, by a fraction. Thus, if we have to divide 1 by 1 minus a, we obtain the fraction 1 over 1 minus a. Okay. So then he says, this does not prevent us from attempting the division according to the rules that have been given so far. Well, first of all, do you know why you can actually use this method? Have you ever thought about that? I bet you have no clue why you can actually follow the procedure Euler uses here. Not even your best professors of mathematics understand this because they're absolutely incorrigible morons. Okay, They don't even understand division. So division is a measure, okay? And you cannot use this approach here. So for example, let me get my pen. You cannot say this. One divided by one plus a. You cannot say one goes into one once and then subtract that, okay? And so you'll have minus a and then you'll say, well, that goes into their minus a, one that is goes into their minus a, and then you have minus a and minus a squared, and then you subtract that. And so you, you cannot do this process here unless one and one plus a are numbers, okay, or magnitudes in geometry. So, and why can you do this? Well, to cut a long story short, I'm going to give you a list of videos here. In fact, I'll put all the links in there because I've discussed quite a lot of them. But the one that will give you the most understanding is this teaching long division. Okay, And once you've gone through that one, you can see exactly what is division and polynomial division. Because uh, most people don't understand that when you divide, when you divide a certain number, let's say 20 by 8. You're actually measuring 20 with 8 and or parts of 8. Okay? So you can do this in a number of ways. All right. So let's see one way to do it. Now, you can, for example, you can say 8 goes into 20, let's say once. Okay? And then we can say 1 times 8. And that's 16, right? And then we can say, rewrite 8 as 4 plus 4. <laughs> Doesn't matter. And say 4 goes into 16, let's say, 3 times. So add 3 here. And then multiply uh, 3 by 8, and you'll get 24, right? No problem. Subtract this. And what will you have down here? minus 8, okay? So if you wanted the result so far, it would be 4 minus 8, right? But we're not there yet. Now, we can say that we can continue on in this way. So we can use either the whole number or partial divisors. But the idea is to try and get as close as we can to measuring 20 with 8 and or parts of 8, all right? So... Now, if we said this here, we'd have 4 minus 8, which is minus 4. So we've already overshot because <laughs> we know that 8 doesn't go into 20 more than two times, right? So 
And this is explained, by the way, this whole process here is explained. It doesn't matter how you do it. You will always get the correct answer by summing up the partial quotients. Okay. And, and then, of course, you can also use partial dividends. You can say 20 is equal to 10 plus 10 or 4 plus 16 or 4 plus 4 plus 12. It doesn't matter how you do it. Okay. What we're interested mostly is how... 8 measures 20, okay? So we need two of these, okay, plus half of 8, okay? That means 16 plus 4, right? So in other words, uh, to measure 20, we have a measure that says we need two eighths and one half of, an, one half of 8, which is, of course, 4, all right? This. Now, I don't want to spend time on that. You can look at that in this, in these videos here. I'll place links to all of them. And so that's the reason why you can actually do what Euler did over here, okay? So now what he does is he shows how many different ways you can write 1 divided by 1 plus a, okay, or 1 minus a. So in this case here, he gives you at least five forms and all of these by the way are correct all of these here are equal to one over one minus a and it doesn't matter what the value of a is if you put a in here it will equal to this value if you put a in here it doesn't have to be uh, between minus one and one it can be any particular number you like okay do you understand that all right so Euler does something very stupid and he decides that uh by continuing this process, we can write this expression here as an infinite series, something like, like this. Here we go. Something like this, okay? Which is utter nonsense, because if you write it like that, then A, for, well, this expression, for example, is never equal to 1 over 1 plus A. Never, because first of all, there's no such thing as an infinite sum. And second of all, a is restricted if you're going to use uh, if you're going to use this as a means to finding the value of the fraction. It's restricted to between minus one and one. Okay. Whereas if you choose any of the other forms, it doesn't matter what value you put in for a. Okay. So there's no there's no such thing as an infinite series, and you cannot sum up an infinite number of terms. You can find a limit, but that's not the same as the sum. Euler foolishly, foolishly defines the series to be equal to its limit, okay? And he is the blundering moron who gave you a third equals to 0 0.333 dot, 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 okay? And you'll see examples of that. And also uh, uh, one is equal to 0 0.999 dot, dot, dot. That's also garbage. And you'll see examples of that in, in these videos over here. So I'm not going to spend time on it. Now, a fraction is a number. A series is not a number. This is not a number. But this is a number, a well-formed number. Now, writing fractions in closed form, as Euler did previously in those five forms that I showed you, back up here again. Okay, where are those five forms? There you go, five of them. Uh, it means that you can substitute any particular value into A here. You don't have to care about restricting the value as Euler does when he decides he, he's going to call something an infinite series. Of course, it's not an infinite series. It just It's basically just a partial sum followed by three dots, dot, dot, dot. Okay? That's all it is. So what I'm telling you here now is uh, mathematicians, not mathematicians, excuse me, they're not real mathematicians. They're not even worthy to be called mathematician arsewipes. Uh, pretend that they understand mathematics. But in order to, in order to measure a dividend with a divisor, you need to find out how many holes and or parts of the divisor will measure the dividend. Okay? Like I explained in the previous example, if we have 20 divided by 8, okay, we need two of those, two of the 8s, 
and half of the eighth. Okay, and that will give us 20. Now, as I said earlier on, it doesn't matter how you do this, and I'll just do one more example. So you could say 8 goes into there once, like that, subtract 8. Then you'll have 12, right? I think I made a mistake in one of my calculations previously. Never mind. Okay, so now you can say 8 goes into this two times. So let's say plus 2, and then you're going to have 16, right? <laughs> Trust me to make an arithmetical error. Subtract that, and then you're going to have minus 4, right? So you can say, let's say 8 goes into that minus a half, right? Can we say that? Then we're going to have, if we say minus a half, like so, then it's minus 4, right? Boom, we're finished, right? That's one of innumerably many ways to do this measure. You could have done it in any other particular way you liked. You don't have to worry about decimals or any of that crap. This is the true essence of the algorithm. And of course, 1 plus 2 is 3, and 3 minus a half is 2 and a half. And that's exactly the answer we got there. Okay, and You, you can do this in innumerably many ways. There's no limit to the number of ways you can do it. You can even say it goes in negative times. You can even break this divisor into partial divisors like that. And you can even break this guy into partial divisors like this. And you can say 2 goes into 10 five times and then just carry on what I've showed you here. Each time the, the remainder uh, will readjust the the answer, which is the sum of the partial quotients, okay? So that's the real meaning of division, and that's why you can do the sort of things that you find when you use a long division algorithm or the remainder theorem or any of those particular algebraic constructs. So I also want to give you free of charge the best book ever written on numbers, okay? It's the ultimate book of numbers. The ultimate book of numbers. Here it is. Okay, so I'm going to give you this book free of charge. You should download it because it's not going to be free forever. And this explains to you exactly what is the meaning of a number. It gives you the history. It takes you through every particular aspect of number so that you will finally understand what is a number. Not some kind of gibberish that some uh, nincompoop who has a PhD writes an article and says, oh, the Greeks never really understood, the ancient Greeks never really understood this or that, whereas the, the imbecile doesn't understand, and he's thinking that he understood better than the ancient Greeks. In fact, let me tell you something. The ancient Greeks were more advanced in many aspects of mathematics than most, than all mathematics professors today, okay? It totally uh, is the case. I can tell you that as a matter of fact they have retrogressed from the clarity and the brilliance of the ancient Greeks. And by the way, uh, don't get confused with the modern Greeks. They're just a bunch of morons like their Western counterparts. Okay, so I'm talking about the ancient Greeks, not the modern Greeks. They're idiots. So um, you can understand number and you can understand mathematics, which is the abstract science of measure and number. If you're not already a subs subscriber, become one. Tell your friends about this channel. Tell your friends about my academia, where they can become followers. And of course, contribute a few dollars at my GoFundMe link. I'm John Gabriel, and this is a new calculus channel. Till next time, goodbye.